Next, we have another rule that does not impact how we took the derivative and is also not going to impact how we take the antiderivative. So if we had to take the antiderivative of something with more than one piece, we have f of x plus g of x all inside our antiderivative symbol, and we're doing it with respect to x, all we would do is we take the antiderivative of the first term as usual with respect to x, and then we would add the antiderivative of the second term with respect to x. And this is whether it's added or subtracted. You just take each antiderivative normally the same way you did with derivatives. The derivative of x squared was always 2x, even if the original function asked for the derivative of x squared plus 5x to the 17th or something crazy. It didn't impact the derivative of each term. So same thing here. We have a couple things inside our integrand. We have 4x to the fourth. So first thing I would do is I'd keep that constant multiple 4 and then add 1 to my power, which was also 4. So 4 plus 1 is 5. We'd have 4 over 5, x to the 5. Plus, now I'm going to take the antiderivative of 2x squared. I'm going to keep the constant multiple 2. Add 1 to my power, 2 plus 1 is 3. That goes in the denominator and up as my new power. And these all end with a plus c. If you were not sure of your answer, you would check it by taking the derivative. For the next one, we're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to take it piece by piece, taking each antiderivative. So first piece we have is x to the third. 3 plus 1 is 4, so I'm going to do 1 over 4, x to the four. Next piece we have is 4x, so I'm going to add 1 to the power. This is really x to the first power when it's not written. So we'd have 1 plus 1 is 2. That would give us 4 over 2, x to the 2. This is a case where I would simplify it because 4 divided by 2 is the same thing as just 2. So 4 over 2, x to the 2 just ends up being 2x squared. And then we have the antiderivative of a constant. The antiderivative of negative 7 is going to be negative 7x plus c. It's that constant times x plus c. Here we kind of simplified as we went, so maybe I'm not feeling as sure of my answer. You can always check it by taking the derivative. You don't have to, but if it helps you get the answer perfect on a test or something like that, I would do it. So if we check our answer, we bring down the power 1 fourth times 4. You could use a calculator. That's just going to be 1 x to the third. Taking the derivative again, the derivative of 2x squared is 4x. So, so far we're doing good. We got x cubed, we got 4x. Last term, the derivative of negative 7x is negative 7. So we got all three pieces of our antiderivative correct because when we take the derivative of them, we get back to what was on the inside of the integrand. So we did this correctly, and this would be my final answer. On the next page, we can do that again. It looks a little different because it looks like we have multiplication. But we're just going to have to take a step and rewrite this. We don't have a product rule or anything like that yet for an antiderivative. And in fact, we won't get a product rule. So we can just multiply this out. x times x is x squared. On the outside, we have x times negative 3, which would give us negative 3x. On the inside, we have 1 times x, which is 1x. And then our last term is 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. So all we did was distribute. We keep our take the integral symbol because we didn't take the antiderivative yet. And I'm still not ready to take the antiderivative because I can combine some like terms. Since I have x squared, that's my first term. But my second term, I have a negative 3x plus 1x, which is going to give me a negative 2x minus 3, combining some like terms. Now that I've simplified what I have to take the antiderivative of by multiplying everything out, I'm ready to actually take the antiderivative. I'm going to add one, put it in the denominator, put it up top for this first one. So x squared 1 over 2 plus 1 is 3, x to the 3. Next term, I would have a minus 2, and the power is 1, so 1 plus 1 is 2. So I'd have minus 2 over 2, x to the 2. And minusing 2 over 2, you could 
just really not write it because that's really just going to be minus one. You can. It's not wrong. Keeping your cons multiple two, your new power is two, but you've just wrote one. So you have minus one x squared, however you want to write that. And then the antiderivative of negative three is negative three x plus c. So you can leave it just like that, or you could write it one third x cubed minus x squared minus three x plus c. Again, you could check your answer by taking the derivative of it, and then you would have to factor it to see if it comes back to be those two factors in the original integrand. This is another tough one that you'll see in the homework. You have something that looks like it's a quotient. We do not have a quotient rule for antiderivatives yet, and in fact, we won't get one just like we don't get a product rule for antiderivatives. There are less rules, which is great, but we have to figure out how to work with this. So we're just going to divide each piece by x. So we're going to take the antiderivative, and we have x squared divided by x minus 3x divided by x dx which really means we're going to take the antiderivative of x minus 3. We just divided each term by x and then simplified. Now we're ready to take the antiderivative. You might want to put a star on this one. The antiderivative of x sometimes trips people up. That's just x to the first power. So 1 plus 1 is 2. So the antiderivative of x is going to be 1 over 2, x to the 2. 1 half x squared, and then the antiderivative of negative 3 is going to be negative 3x plus c, that constant times x plus c.